In this video we're going to mount the Corsair H100i CPU cooler onto the Intel i7-4790K CPU which will be installed on the ASUS Maximus 7 Hero Z97 motherboard. The H100i is very easy to install and the installation process is the same for all Intel motherboards. The first thing we need to do is install the CPU. It's extremely easy to do. You see that there is a small arrow in the bottom left corner of the CPU chip itself. And then you can see on the bracket that retains the, the processor, there is also an arrow to match up with it. You really can't put the CPU in incorrectly because it will not allow you to, but all you do is just lay it in there gently. If you put it in incorrectly, it will not lay down flat. You will also see that there are two small indentations near the top where there are two notches in the CPU socket. Once it is laid in correctly, all you do is lay down the mounting bracket and use the control arm on the side to securely lock it in place. The arm pulls out slightly as you're pressing it down and then slides right back in to lock it into place. Once the CPU is fully installed, the next thing we need to do is begin mounting the cooling bracket. This X bracket that we're taking a look at is mounted on the rear side of the motherboard. Mine may look a little different than what yours is going to look like because I've got mine mounted already onto a uh, tray that is installed into my Cooler Master Half XB Evo, which I can take out anytime I need to work on the motherboard without fully uninstalling the motherboard itself. You will notice on this bracket there is a notch on one side. Make sure that it fits around the outside of the two screws on the CPU socket mounting bracket. To install this all you need to do is make sure that the mounting studs stick through the holes and you can slide them back and forth to fit. Once the bracket is firmly seated, we need to flip the motherboard back over and then we are going to install the offset studs. There are four of these studs that we are going to install. Be sure that you're using the correct studs for mounting onto an Intel CPU and motherboard. Once the standoffs are installed, we need to prepare for applying the thermal paste. I always clean everything off once again right before I apply the thermal paste just to make sure that there are no remaining residues or lint on the CPU. And we will also be doing the same with the heat sink assembly. When doing the final touches on cleaning, I like to use a coffee filter. If you use paper towel or anything that may leave lint behind, you're not going to get the most effective thermal conductivity. Now we're going to do the same thing to the heat sink and pump assembly for the H100i. When it comes to thermal pastes, I found that Arctic MX4 tends to be my favorite. I've used Arctic Silver 5 and also IC Diamond. And of the different thermal compounds I've used, I found Arctic MX4 to be the most effective. One that I have yet to try is the Gelid GC Extreme, which seems to be kind of a new favorite of most people, and I plan to try that out next. But uh, as far as the ones that I have used, the Arctic MX4 is the best.
This next part tends to be the trickiest, uh, the mounting of the heat sink and pump assembly onto the CPU itself and the brackets. Uh, there's a retaining bracket that goes over the pump, which will mount it and secure it to the standoff studs that you've installed. This mounting bracket is magnetic, so it will lock itself into place on top of the pump assembly. Um, but right here is where it gets tricky. You don't want to set the heat sink on at an angle. You want to try and set it on there as flat as possible and lightly thread on the retention screws one at a time. You don't want to tighten these down all the way just yet, but get them on securely so that the pump isn't going to move or adjust while you're tightening the rest of them down. This is the trickiest part. Just try to hold the pump assembly as flat as possible while installing these, these retaining screws. Be sure that once the heat sink makes contact with thermal paste that you do not lift it off. Once you lift it off, you will create air pockets, which means you will have to clean both surfaces off again and reapply thermal paste and restart the process of mounting the heat sink and pump assembly over again. Once you've installed the fourth and final thumb screw, you'll want to start in one corner and gently tighten it down little by little and jump to the opposite corner and do the same thing and keep going from opposite side to opposite side, gently tightening down each of these screws. Once you've got them as tight as you can by hand, you'll take a screwdriver and do the final tightening. Each of these should completely bottom out and you will know at that point that you've got the heat sink and pump assembly installed completely. Obviously you're working with fairly delicate components, so you want to tighten to the point where you feel like it's not going to tighten anymore, but not so hard that you're going to snap or break anything. Though the H100i is compatible with almost all current Intel motherboards and CPUs, one thing that I didn't mention is you need to make sure that this 240 mm radiator is compatible with your case. You'll either need to look at the manual or your manufacturer's website to see if your case is compatible with a 240 millimeter radiator. Now that we have everything completely installed and secured, all we need to do is connect all the necessary components to power the pump and also connect the Corsair Link cable to one of the USB headers so we can control the LED colors of the Corsair logo on top of the pump as well as monitor uh, the pump's performance as well as the CPU's temperature. The Corsair Link software will also allow you to monitor the stock fans that come with this that connect directly to the pump, the SP120L fans. I actually have installed some Noctua NFF12 fans because they're a lot more efficient as well as a heck of a lot quieter. I like to do a little cable management, so I'm running the USB cable underneath the motherboard tray, bringing it up on the other side and connecting it to the USB header. Next we need to power the pump, so we have a 3-pin fan header connection that you can connect to any of the fan headers onto your motherboard, and then the next connection will be a SATA power connection. You can connect this to any of the SATA power connectors from your power supply unit. If you are using the fans that came with the H100i, there are actually fan connectors onto the pump where you connected the USB connection. If you are using upgraded fans, then you will need to use the PWM CPU fan headers on your motherboard. This particular motherboard has two. One is the CPU fan header and one will say CPU optional or CPU OPT. 
you only have one CPU fan header, then you will want to use a Y splitter cable to connect both fans. And that's it. Once you've got the fans connected, it's time to turn on the computer and see how everything works. Be sure to monitor your CPU temps and make sure everything's working. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out more or check out BYOGamingPC.com for information on how to build your own computer.